Hello back, everyone. Thanks for being here. And this week, we're going to continue our discussion that we had last week. If you'll remember last week, we talked about our summer programs. We had nine summer programs. And I'll just review with you all, just in case you missed it, to make you uh, feel like you want to go back and listen to the podcast from last week, in case you missed it. We have, starting off with our cute one, we have our mandatory uh, incoming grades kinder through first grade ESL summer school. So uh, the federal government asked that we offer summer school to our second language kiddos that are coming into kinder and those that were kinder who are going into first grade and so that we spend 150 hours with them during the summer with more English to give them a stronger start. So we're certainly happy to do that and then we will have our uh, mandatory 5-8 retesting summer school for the few kids who this week uh, after taking the test didn't pass it and you know usually it's one of those that they didn't pass it by one or two but because uh, the state says you have to reach a certain score then they have to go to uh, a short summer school and then they will retake the reading and or start uh, I'm sorry reading and or math depending on which one they missed uh, at the end of June, that last week of June. So that's a mandatory one. Then we have our science summer camp for grades two through four, and those are for e um, ELLs, for English language learners. So again, trying to get their English foundation stronger so that that will impact them positively during the school year. Then we also have that same summer camp for science, for ELs, for English language learners for grades 5-8. So then we have the rising third grade. This is the first time we've done this. And that is getting the second grade kiddos into a rising star third grade math camp to give them pre-third grade math. That way, again, we're trying to do a couple of different things with all of our summer schools, not just this one. And that is trying to avoid the summer slide the summer slide is a very real thing. It's, it's researched, uh, there's papers written on it, there's dissertations written on it, and what that says is that kids do lose reading and math skills during the summer if they don't do something strategic to avoid that. And so we have lots of opportunity to help kids avoid the summer slide, and these programs are part of it. Uh, let me finish up and then we'll talk about the softwares. Um, so. We have the rising third grade math camp, at, and this, this is for all locations, by the way. We have GT summer camp, and those, that's two weeks in June. We also have the credit recovery for ninth through 12th grade. We have the end of course retesting for the English one, biology, English two, algebra one, and US history. They, there's different testing dates that they have b between June 24th and June 27th. But um, again, we're giving them prep so that they can pass those because frankly, they can't graduate without those high school uh, end of courses. They're star tests, but we call them end of course, EOCs. And so we, this is another opportunity for our ninth, 10th, and hopefully not older than that kids who up to this point have not been able to pass those uh, graduation requirement tests. Let me make sure I haven't missed any. Oh yes, our Chinese camp. We have our Chinese camp the third week of June, both locations, to reinforce the Chinese skills that they've been getting all year and, and every year since, let's see, I think we've been doing this now for three years. So we uh, certainly thank our Chinese teachers for putting together a very enjoyable, engaging uh, Chinese camp, which I believe will include calligraphy, martial arts, of course, a lot of speaking, um, 
learning how to use chopsticks, just fun stuff that um, I'm sure mom and dad want to hear about when they get home. So I haven't given you all the dates on these. Please know that this particular document that I'm holding in my hands has been sent home uh, as of last week and probably every week. It'll be sent home to remind parents of the nine summer schools that we have for you. But frankly, that's, that's one or two weeks out of the summer for your child. And summer is two and a half months long, right? So I thought it would be a good idea to walk you through what some other opportunities are for school, for summer school, and I'm sorry, for summer activities. Because the city of Dallas, the area of Dallas, has very vibrant uh, organizations. They have vibrant uh, people who put together these events specifically for the people who live in those cities. And many times, we don't know about it. And so I'm going to catch you up on, on what's available. And I, well, of course, I can't catch up on what, everything that's available. What I can do, though, is go through and show you how to get to these places so that you can go online to the city of your choice and maybe some others uh, and look up what neat things are going on in the city. So let me grab the Dallas packet. 75% of our students who go to Mesquite, and we have 1,050 students in Mesquite right now, they come from the Dallas area. So they're not Mesquiteans. The other 25% are. So we're going to start with Dallas since that's our biggest group of parents and families. So what I did is I went to the City of Dallas website, very easy to get to, and I found, gosh, more, probably more events than you have time to go to, but certainly events for children, events for seniors, events for families, just lots of things to do. And, and as I've been researching and exploring the different online sites of the cities, I see that they have slightly different setups. So I wanted to walk you through that a little bit to uh, make you more comfortable going online and looking for some of the things that will help you find events for you and your family to go to. So in Dallas, I went up to the top and they have in their search bars things to do. Okay? That's pretty clear, right? So it says here, your Dallas Parks and Rec Department is full of fun, exciting, and educational parks, facilities, and attractions. Whether you're looking for an afternoon activity for your family or a full day of fun without a town guest, you're sure to find what you're looking for here. And they have a featured event place. Uh, they have the event calendar. And just to give you a couple ideas of what's coming up, today they have Step Into Summer Wellness Walk at the Ridgewood Rec Center. They also have um, the Thurgood, uh, Thurgood Marshall Public Meeting going on today and the Grauwaller Park Spray Ground Ribbon Cutting. That's interesting, Spray Ground. Hmm, I wonder if that's a playground. And then they have the different sites for you to click on in the city of Dallas. For example, Bachman Lake, Bahama Beach Water Park, Cedar Ridge Preserve, Fair Park, Historic Sites, and we probably need to uh, help our children with that more, understanding the history of Dallas. It's, uh, it's a very rich history. And Children's Aquarium at Fair Park, Dallas Arboretum, the Dallas Zoo, Downtown Parks, Elm Fork Shooting Sports. That's sort of interesting. Uh, what is this? Top rated complex comprised of rifle, pistol, shotgun, and archery ranges. This 467 acre facility has catered to shooting sports enthusiasts since the mid 60s, and that's owned by the city. Interesting. The Southern Skates Roller Rink. Oh, I haven't been to one of those in a while. Texas Discovery Gardens. Now I went to a wedding there, and that's where they have the Butterfly Museum, Butterfly Gardens. It's really quite beautiful. Trinity River Audubon Center, White Rock Lake, and golf. So there's a there's six 18 hole courses uh, in the city of Dallas. So already you can tell that there is plenty to click on because within each of the places that I read, it's a click. It's not just a paragraph, that's a click for you to find out more about what to do at Bachman Lake, what to do at Bahama Beach, or how to get there, or how much it costs, historic sites, the um, children's aquarium, and so forth. So uh, what else in Dallas? They have uh, sites that are, like I said, very easy to get to once you do the 
uh, things to do or programs and activities. Now one of the things that I noticed all three cities had was an activity guide and this one for Dallas is activities for all ages and I just printed one of them. This one was 23 pa no, 26 pages long and it's a listing of Dallas parks with activities. Find your fun. And so you, you click on it and it gives you quick links through there, how to contact them. They also have um, other type of guides in there, by the way, but we're just going to look at this one. From fitness and sports to arts and en enrichment, the Dallas Park and Recreation Department offers a wide variety of, of activities for citizens of all ages. With 43 convenient locations throughout the city, we know we have an activity for you. Our activity guide will help you find exactly what you're looking for. So this is where you can learn more about, let's see, we have um, Teen Tech Center, Create, Learn, and Explore. They have uh, information about arts and aquatics and health and fitness, martial arts, seniors, if, you, if you've got grandparents at home and want to get them out of the house, special interests, sports, and therapeutic recreation. So that's interesting. Um, a, a literally something for everyone. Here's a summer fun at Southern Skates Roller Rink and they have skating events, parties, and again this is owned by the city. Um, let's see what else they have. Oh, online you can find not only the calendar of hours of operation, for example, for Bahama Beach, but then for pages and pages it lists the activities that they have what location, what are the hours, and how to sign up. And, and really, th there's very little cost to these. Let's see. So, the Dallas Parks and Recreation Centers have, they have 43 recreational centers, they have 39 fitness centers, 16,871 programs, and last year they had a million four hundred seven uh, one million four hundred seventy thousand four hundred and two people who attended their city events and offerings. So, if you want to know more, go to the city of Dallas. You can also go to DallasParks.org. But there's there's no reason in the world if you live in Dallas or close by that you aren't kept busy as much as you want to during the day or evening events and so forth, weekend events. There's just no reason not to have something to do. All right, we're going to head now to the Plano one because Plano has, uh, our Plano school has mostly Plano kids. They, there's some from McKinney and Wiley and Richardson and um, Allen, but um, they're mostly Plano. So we'll just, we're using this as an, as an example and as a model of what to do to go to your city's online uh, website to see what events they offer. Now, I liked Plano's header. If you remember in Dallas, it said things to do. Plano's header says play. So you click on play, and then you can head to all the things that they have so that you can play. And, and so, let's see. And they have eye calendars where you can sign up t to have these eye calendars go to your Google Calendar and automatically upload it so that you don't have to do that. When the city does it, it uploads it to your calendar. Let's see. So events coming up in Plano, they have Tommy Alverson and Ed Burleson Thursday, June 6th at 730 in the Courtyard. It's the Courtyard Texas Series, which is every other month. So this is June 6th. And uh, then they have August 1st in the Courtyard Music Series, Max and Heather Stalling. And I won't read you how, why they're famous, but they've you know, had, had hit, hit records. Saturday, May 18th, Downtown Sessions, Folk Family Revival. So that's this weekend, Saturday, May 25th, The Gibbonses. June 6th, as I said, Tommy Alverson and Ed Burleson. And then the uh, August 1st was the Heather Stalling, Max and Heather. And then October 3rd is um, Profits and Outlaws. So these are all calendar opportunities. And again, it, the most important part is going to these places and getting signed up so that the, you get uh, 
and notification of what's upcoming in the next few weeks from the city of Plano or whatever, actually, you know, whatever city, because they all have that. So I downloaded the summer camps uh, activity guide for Plano, and their logo is Happy, Healthy, Having Fun. And let's see, you, you have to sign up, so registration is open. And having lived in Plano up to a couple of years ago, and I raised my kids in Plano, you must be very timely in your sign up for the summer for whatever you want, okay? For whatever you want to have for your kids to do, whether Cimarron Youth Camp for six and 12 year olds, um, they have counselor and training, 14 to 16 year olds, you must sign up the day before, or the day it tells you, uh, because these things tend to fill up very, very quickly. Um, I see indoor day camps, camp connection for six to 11 year olds, pre-connections, and, and it says here $15, there's po pre-connections is $15, post-connections, 6 to 11s is $35, and that's, oh, that's an extended. Um, so the pre-connections is 7.30 to 9, and then post-connections is for 2 p.m. to 5.30, I guess for working parents. And there's recreational, social, and vocational opportunities for individuals with disabilities. So they have adapted recreation programs that are designed to meet the needs of individuals with disabilities from 12 months to over 60 years of age. Um, you know, Plano's 12% special ed. We have uh, kids with uh, Asperger, autism, and so forth. And so the city of Plano does cater to kids of all, and, and adults, I should say, people uh, with all different types of needs. I see a friendship camp, a teen trek, 16 to 22 years, video production camp. They, uh, and I won't read every single thing, but uh, man, they have a lot. Uh, they have cheer, tumble, gymnastics, adventures in art camp, acting, future Dr. Gross Anatomy, Ever wanted to play the role of a doctor? If so, this camp is for you. Hands-on activities will cover amazing features of the human body, such as circulatory, respiratory, skeletal, integumentary, and nervous systems. Your lab coat and stethoscope is yours to keep. Wow, that's fun. Um, so again, you, you can see that these are STEM. A lot of them are STEM. Matter of fact, I see a superhero STEAM for six to eight-year-olds, wonderful world of wizards for eight to 12-year-olds, ballerina, brainopolis, um, science detectives, goodness gracious, there is something for everyone. Little medical school camp for six to 12 year olds, kids and comedy, mad science, intro to stage makeup, music, theater, medley, oof, sports and adventure, teens outreach, work with us this summer, day camp counselor. So this, as you can see, and I can't go through every single bit, but I'm hoping I can entice you to go and look on your own to make sure that you don't miss anything. All right, now I'm going to go to Mesquite. What's happening in Mesquite? Well, Mesquite also has a calendar. And I, let's see, what's her special events calendar? Uh, May 17th, Movies in the Park. That's this weekend, I think, or Friday. June 8th, Summer Sizzle. June 21st, movies in the park, pool party on July 12th, doggy splash day, August 10th, drive-in movie, August 16th, and so forth. They had a fun guide. Nice pictures. All right, so let's see. They have Dunford Recreational uh, Center, Evans, Florence, Good Bar, and Rutherford. And then they have the City Lake Aquatic Center, Vanston Pool, Townies Pool, the Th Thompson Gymnasium, Shaw Gymnasium, Camp Rory Galloway. So again, lots of offerings. Six ways for Mesquite to enjoy parks. Take your dog to play at the leash-free zones. Enjoy the beauty of City Park Lake. Oh, I said that wrong. City Lake Park. Reserve a pavilion, shelter a room, and celebrate birthdays and other special occasions. Take a friend and play disc golf. Find hidden treasures with geocaching. And the, the geo, the, if you want to know how to do that, you would go to the cityofmesquite.com backslash geo and go for a walk on the Mesquite Heritage Trail. 
summer camps. They have kids camps, sports camps, outdoor adventure camps, steam camp, teen camp. Um, these start week one is June 3rd through the 7th. Dino Discovery, Backyard Bash, Animal Planet, Spark Up Adventure. Wow. And then every week they have different things. Uh, on week three, Lasers and Stripes, Field Trip to Celebration Station, World Cup, uh, Campers and Glamours, H2GO, Field Trip to Hawaiian Falls, Retro Camp. All right, so it goes through week nine. There's week 11. Let the good times roll, which is the end of August. The week, of, the end of summer's here, but that will not stop us. This week will be filled with crafts and games that will keep you moving and grooving until the sun goes down. Wow, tennis camp, archery lessons, aquatics, and and I'm really seeing some cheap prices here. Ent admission prices to City Lake Aquatic Center. If you're a resident, it's four dollars, up to age 49. Uh, it's two dollars if you're 50 plus. I mean, this this is just doable. Uh, athletics they have for adults: co-ed, youth sports, little rookies, ages three to four. Special Olympics they have Special Olympics in July and at the end of June. And they um, it's free, although they do ask for maybe a twenty dollar per year suggested donation. So you can see that that's. Money is not the reason why you shouldn't go. Calendar of events. Man, they just have some fun stuff going on here. Let me give you an example of prices. Play tennis. This is 7-1. It's $3 for an hour and a half. Yin yoga. It's a $5 drop-in fee. Go fishing. City Lake Park, free. Have a picnic, free. Play disc golf, free. Archery, free. Ride a bike, free. Karate, Dunford Rec uh, Recreational, the first time is free. Play pickleball, uh, Rutherford Rec, free for ages 50 plus. Urban Soul Dance, $5 drop-in fee. So you can see that th they're really not here to make money. They're here to bring their uh, residents in and have them be moving, have them have fun, and have them know that their city is looking out for them and using some of their tax money in a very enjoyable way for them, for the residents. Okay, so if you've got kids, um, they're looking for recreation leader, lifeguards, counselor and training program for uh, the city of Mesquite. So this is for teens, 14 to 17. You might want to see about doing that, get paid for it. They have recreation classes. They have dog obedience classes, the quilt guild, they have chess for ages five up, yoga, swing out dance, intro to ballet and tap, urban soul dancing, Zumba, basketball, uh, ball empowerment, basketball training ages six to 17, teen hoops, karate lessons, and so forth. Okay, so I hope I've enticed you to go to the websites of the cities that you live in or that are very close to you uh, I did notice, for example, in the city of Mesquite, they had a resident and a non-resident fee. The resident fee was $4, let's say, for something. For the non-resident, it would be $7. So that's not, um, that's not out of bounds. So the next thing we're going to talk about is exploring your city libraries, another place that we sometimes forget about. The, I went to the Dallas Public Libraries uh, main website which is beautiful by the way they have all sorts of things uh, and events that they offer and, and are trying to uh, get people to calendar but uh, the big thing that stood out and matter of fact I have already posted it on Facebook is the sum is the mayor's reading challenge for uh, summer right the and this is not the first time they've done it because it says if you if you registered last year, if you did it last year, you still have your same account. You need to sign in and get started. And of course, you know what to do if you don't remember your login. They can. Oh, it says if you don't remember your login, ask a librarian. So if you live in Dallas, just go to the nearest library, and they will help you find your account. So how does the sum the mayor's summer reading challenge work? Well, you create an account, you log in the days that that you children read at least twenty minutes. And then you visit the library to pick up your prize at the end of the summer. 
So your prize really is not losing reading skills, but it's nice to get another prize from the library for recognizing your hard work. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. And I'll stay in the order I was in originally. And so now we'll go to Plano. Plano has the 2019 summer programs and classes at the library. This summer, be a space explorer at the library and learn more about our galaxy. Celebrate the 50th anniversary of the moon landing by making a UFO, exploring black holes, creating a nebula, embroidering a constellation, and finding the missing spaceship. And I won't read you everything, but there's, uh, gosh, there's, there's some neat things going on. Set your reading goal, come to our Big Bang Bash, learn about 3D printing. Chinese learners can learn technology in Chinese classes using... Okay, uh, I, I said I wasn't going to read it, and it's just pulling me in. Teens, oh, they have a financial literacy. Teens can learn how to, how far their paychecks will take them as they play the game of life with college students from the University of North Texas Student Money Management Center. And then, here's another one. Here's Plano. Special needs and autism-friendly programs are for children with ASD and other special needs and families. S they call it SNAP. The Special Needs and Autism Friendly Program, SNAP Storytime and SNAP Family Storytime includes books, songs, movements, activities, playtime, high structure, and interaction in a sensory sensitive environment. SNAP STEAM Saturdays allow children with ASD and other special needs and their families to experience STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and music in their own way. So again, very um, needs oriented. And uh, let's see. I, I want to remind you that they have reading readiness story time at the different libraries in Plano, as all the libraries do. For example, you have Tuesday today was family story time, then uh, rhyme time at Shimofinig tomorrow, uh, toddler time at Par um, Library, toddler time at Haggard, family story time Wednesday at Davis. Um, and again, uh, they have story time sensory th ages three and up, an interactive, inclusive story time idea, ideal for children with special needs such as autism spectrum disorder, sensory integration challenges, or short attention spans. Um, so make sure that you if, you, if if you have or if you know somebody who has um, a child with sensory issues, know that libraries are prepared to work with them. And so what's going on at the uh, Mesquite Library. We have also uh, Steam Club, uh, Young at Art, Cookies and Crafts for Teens. Uh, May 24th, by the way, they have a National Paper Airplane Day. They also have a Crazy 8 Math Club at these um, li at the Mesquite Libraries. And I saw this in the s several of the library sites, and that is there's a big push to have kindergartners read a thousand books before kindergarten. This program promotes early childhood literacy by encouraging parents to read 1,000 books with their children by the time they enter kinder. Children earn prizes once they have read a certain number of books and are awarded a free book when they finish their 1,000th book. For more information, you can visit the 1,000 Books Before Kinder program uh, or call the main library. So um, those are some, hopefully, some enticing places to go find free or very low cost events and activities to do this summer. Now one of the things that I want to challenge parents to do because financial literacy is always something that that kids need and we don't do enough of, especially in a relevant way. So what I challenge parents to sort of set a budget with your family to say we're going to set a budget of what we will spend this summer. And then children, I, I'm going to pretend to be mom, I want you guys to decide how we're going to spend our money. So let's say that we're going to put aside um, $200 a month. I'm just picking a figure and for a family of four. On those $200, you guys have to decide what we're going to do, what events. You have to go to the library online uh, website. You have to go to the city website and pull out those things that you want us to do. Some we can do just for kids and some we, you got to pick some family stuff. But we want you to come up with a budget and a activity a schedule of activities that meets that budget so that we have ongoing fun that we can afford all summer long. And so 
it's a win-win for families who work with their kids this way. Because when I ask parents to do that, parents tell me they're too busy to look at these online sites and to find things that fit their budget. But you, you have kids who not only can do it, but need to know how to do it and will enjoy it, probably much more than you. So give them the chance to show you how, uh, how they can meet this goal of yours. Because so many times I've seen adults set an expectation with children, with children who frankly don't think the children can carry it out. And then the children do it in a way that blows that adult away. And so I challenge you to have that as a goal for your family, and then those of you, if, if I can get five or six families to do that this summer, and you can show me that you did it, I'll put you on the air when we come back. I'll cut, we'll do a podcast of how your kids did that, what you ended up doing, what your budget was, and so forth. So I challenge our legacy families to experience financial literacy by setting a summer budget and letting the kids be the ones that pick the summer fun. Thank you for tuning in to the Ask Dr. Be Good show. For more information on Legacy Preparatory Charter Schools, visit our website, LegacyPCA.com, or call 469-249-1099. And remember to like us on Facebook, where we stream live weekly Tuesdays at 3 p.m.